In this episode, we'll be reviewing the anatomy of the penis. So the penis is divided into two anatomic compartments. We have the corpora cavernosa, which are the paired erectile bodies, and they attach to the pubic arch proximally. And we have the corpora spongiosum. This is the portion that the urethra travels through, with the proximal aspect being the bulb and the distal aspect being the glands. Let's talk about the fascial investments of the penis going from deep to superficial. So we have the tunica albiginia, which surrounds the paired corpora, and this has a circular inner layer and a longitudinal outer layer. Next, we have the deep fascia or bux fascia, which surrounds the corpora cavernosa, but then splits ventrally to also surround the spongiosum. Of note, even though there is a septum that separates the corpora, it's permeable distally, and so vascular space is shared between the two corpora. What this means is that physiologically and pharmacologically, the corpora act as a single unit. Lastly, we have the dartos fascia, and this loosely attaches the skin to Buck's fascia and is contiguous with Collie's fascia of the perineum and Scarpa's fascia of the lower abdominal wall. When it comes to the ligaments of the penis, there is a suspensory ligament which is attached to the pubic symphysis. This has a role in holding the penis close to the pubic bone and supporting it during erections. Superficial to this is the fundiform ligament, which is a specialization or a thickening of the scarpus fascia extending from the linea alba from the abdominal wall. The arterial supply for the superficial aspects of the penis arises from the femoral artery and then branches to become the superficial external pudendal vessels. These vessels traverse the femoral triangle and ultimately supply the skin of the penis. The internal pudendal artery becomes the common penile artery and has three terminal branches. The first branch is the bulbo-urethral artery, which penetrates the perineal membrane, enters the spongiosum, and supplies blood for the urethra, spongiosum, and glands. The second branch is the cavernosal artery, which enters the corpora cavernosum at the hilum and gives off the helicene arteries, which dilate with stimulation and in conjunction with the relaxation of smooth muscle, produce an erection. The third branch is the dorsal artery, which travels between the deep dorsal vein medially and the dorsal nerve laterally. There are also circumflex arteries, which branch from the dorsal artery that also supply the spongiosum and the urethra. We will think about venous drainage in three parts. In terms of superficial drainage, the drainage runs through the dartos fascia and eventually converges at the base, forming a single superficial dorsal vein, which usually drains into the saphenous vein. In regards to intermediate venous drainage, the glands is drained by a network of veins that go into the deep dorsal vein. This then passes beneath the symphysis and drains into the prostatic or Santorini's plexus. The distal two-thirds of the penile shaft has circumflex veins from the corpus spongiosum. These course around the corpora cavernosa and enter the deep dorsal vein perpendicularly. There are also venules coming from the cavernous sinuses that drain into a subtunical capillary plexus. These give rise to emissary veins that follow a oblique path, travel through the tunica, and drain into the circumflex veins dorsolaterally. It's these subtunical venues that are compressed against the tunica during an erection. Emissary veins form cavernosal veins in the proximal one-third of the penis and join into either the prostatic plexus or internal pudendal veins. Branches from the bulb and crura also empty into the internal pudendal vein. In regards to lymphatic drainage, skin drainage from the prepuce and shaft flow inter the bilateral superficial inguinal nodes. The glands, however, drains towards the frenulum and beneath bucks to both the superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes. In those who are circumcised, the skin distal to the circumcision scar drains into the glands. In regards to penile innervation, the pudendal nerve 
gives rise to the dorsal nerves, which run lateral to the dorsal arteries and supply somatic motor and sensory innervation. The pelvic plexus supplies the autonomic innervation with parasympathetic efferents from S2 to S4 and sympathetic efferents from T11 to L2. Visceral afferents pierce the corporal bodies and become the cavernosal nerves, which lie dorsomedially to the cavernous arteries. And that's your anatomy lesson for the day. Thanks for watching.